My name is Paul Luna, and you're tuned in to FMB Lunacy. I am here today with host of Wind Up Wino Podcast, Andy Reid. Hi, great to be and here. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It is a beautiful Monday morning, and yeah, it, it's it's a good day. <laughs> Andy, talk to us about Wind Up wino podcast yeah i started the wound up wino podcast um i guess about august of last year we were in the middle of the pandemic um i was working but i wasn't working a lot and i actually found myself doing more drinking boxed wine than anything and there's there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> it's the pan it's the pandemic things happen um, but I was, I was just kind of feeling lost and I was getting bored with my routine. So I was, I started thinking about, okay, well, I do love wine and I know so much about it. I want to share what I love about wine with other people. And a big part of what I love about wine is that there are so many different varietals and styles. And I wanted to highlight some of the more unusual grape varietals and bring in guests who had never tasted these before and maybe have them uh, talk about their experience trying it for the first time. I know that I can be a bit much. I can go overboard. I need somebody to reel me in. What do you think about just bringing everything back down to basics and breaking down what makes wine? What, what makes the philosophy behind wine? what's in a grape, the, just the very bare bones of what wine is and piecing it together block by block. So to make it more accessible to people, um, because that was, that that's always been the driving force behind the podcast. I want to make wine accessible to everyone. And we've been doing seven, or we've just put out our seventh episode, um, following this new format. And it's so much more fun than it was before. It We get super nerdy. Um, we call famous sci famous historical scientist toes. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's been described as no holds barred, um, but <laughs> I think it's safer to say that we're just having fun with it. <laughs> Is there an inexpensive wine currently? you recommend to a wino? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Casal Garcia, they've got a Vino Verde and a Rosé that I absolutely love, and you can find it for $10 or less. They, both of them are just, they're a Portuguese brand, and the wines are just light, and they're crisp, and they've got just enough complexity to keep the really big wine nerds interested, but they're not overly complicated so you can also give this to like your pinot grigio lovers or something like that <laughs> what is your advice for someone new to wines taste everything even if you don't like it because half of the battle of learning about wine is kind of figuring out what you like and why you like it it took me years to figure out that i don't like Beaujolais Nouveau. It's, it's just gross to me. It's, it's, <laughs> and it's, it's just got that stupid bubblegum flavor that drives me up the wall. And I know some people love that and that's great. Good for them. They can have all of it. But for me, it, I found it very detrimental to go in to like a, a restaurant or something and say, well, I like to drink most things, but I absolutely hate Beaujolais Nouveau. And I could never, exp I, I couldn't, before I knew more about wine, I couldn't quantify why. Um, and it was only through tasting everything, tasting other things that were done in a similar style. It's like, okay, so it's not that I hate Beaujolais Nouveau as an idea. It's just that I hate the specific process that they use called carbonic maceration that gives wines this bubblegum thing, this tutti free bubblegum flavor that can also be found in some Australian Shirazes and some other New World wines. So now that I can 
now that I've learned that about myself, I can take that knowledge and I can go into stores or restaurants. And if I'm unfamiliar with their wine lists, I can ask them, look, I love these things about red wines. I love these things about white wines. I know I absolutely hate carbonic maceration. So can you point me towards anything that just does not have that? <laughs> and it, <laughs> it works out so much better. <laughs> so I, I, it's learning about wine, learning about alcohol in general is, is genuinely about drinking everything. And sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes there's just really bad experiences, but you'll never know unless you try it twice. Is a sexy voice required for podcast? Oh, that's a that's a good question. I think what's more important than the voice itself is learning how to modulate it, how to sort of make it rise and fall with expressing your excitement. You can make you anything sound pretty if you know how to modulate your voice. It's great. <laughs> Do you favor a particular grape varietal or wine region? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I definitely have my, I try to be unbiased, but uh, I am absolutely in love with German Riesling and Northern Rhone Syrah. Those are like, those are my deathbed wines. And if I can double fist on, on my deathbed, I will be a happy, happy dying woman. 